Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing Alessia's 12 month, one year update. Can you say I'm one? Say one? One? Yeah! <laughs> one! Alessia is one! That year went so fast, didn't it? That year went so fast, honestly. I think it went even faster because I got pregnant in the middle of it. Well, yeah, she was eight months when I got pregnant, so kind of in the middle. I don't think she's gonna wanna sit still. There's too many fun things to play with around here. But yeah, I got pregnant in the middle of it and that just made it seem like it went faster. I don't know, it's crazy. It is crazy. You saying hello? I got lipstick on my teeth. So Alessia is 12 months, like I said. The Chanel pin, good choice. You have expensive taste, I like it. Okay, so I moved it so that you can kind of see her. <laughs> Say hi, hi. She's just not gonna wanna sit still for this update, but I kinda knew that would happen. So Alessia's 12 months, like I said. As you could see, her hair is still blonde looking. It looks like it turns lighter every month and I think also because not that she was really in the sun to be honest she wasn't really in the sun she was in her buggy a lot when we were on holiday in like Jamaica and on the cruise and stuff so she didn't really get a lot of sun um and also when she was in the sun she had a hat on so for the most part that probably wouldn't have affected her but I did notice that after that trip her hair seemed even blonder but I don't know is that because of just her age and like she's growing into her hair color or I, I'm not really sure. I was looking back at pictures of Eduardo and I think he was kind of similar-ish. I think she's a tiny bit fairer than him though, just because her eye color is lighter as well. And we're not sure yet about her skin tone. I still kind of feel like she might be like Eduardo and kind of tan more easily, but I'm not sure. Cause like I said, she really didn't get into the sun at all. Um, of the three kids she was in at the least. So we won't really know until, I think he was like two or like one and a half when he started getting really brown. Um, and that obviously depends on the time of year as well. But so this summer, I'm excited to see like what happens. Um, but for now, she's still pretty fair. She has blue eyes still, which is still blows me away to this day. I'm like, I just don't even know where that came from or, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know where it came from because Jonathan and I both have blue-eyed people in our families, but it's just neither of us do. Neither of us have them. She is still a mummy's girl. Like, she will, she's got a little bit better, but like, for example, when we had her birthday party, my mum and Jonathan's mum, so both of her grandmothers came to visit and my two sisters were there, but they were there for a little bit less. And she did not want to be held by either grandmas. And she is, okay, so she's not as familiar with them as Amelia would have been, because obviously we lived in Ireland when, because obviously we lived in Ireland when Amelia was this age. So she got to see my mom and even Jonathan's mom a lot more than Alessia did. But at the same time, I looked back at Amelia's update like on my blog and I saw that I had written she's literally comfortable with everybody holding her and she doesn't she's not afraid of strangers which is the complete opposite of Alessia like she just is such a mummy's girl and she'll go to daddy like she'll go to Jonathan you know over somebody else obviously it's her dad but if she sees me, if I walk into the room, she's just always been like this, like from when she was a tiny baby, she just wants me. So I love it, like I'm not complaining. It can be frustrating sometimes for mums of multiples where you just can't put your baby down or like pass them to somebody else. She's not that bad. Like I would say now that she's older, she's happy to go on the floor. Since she started crawling, which she started crawling at I think 11 months, she has been a lot more independent, which has been great for me because I can put her down. Um, but with regards like other people picking her up, especially for the first time, she just doesn't really love it. She's probably the most comfortable with my two sisters because 
I don't know, is it because Erica looks kind of like me? Maybe she thinks it's like me. I don't know. But even Emma picked her up and she was okay with that. Like, she didn't freak out. So I don't know, is it younger people? I don't know what it is. But with grandparents, with straight, complete strangers, she is just like not okay with it. And she's just always been like that. It's it's weird how like different they all are. I would say this month is the month that things have got a lot easier and more manageable. And it's so funny because I say this, but I'm currently 23 weeks pregnant with our fourth child. So I'm saying that things have got easier when it's all about to just hit the fan again, like all over again. So I don't know when, <laughs> Like it's gonna get easy for the long run or like for a longer period of time I know this is short-lived, but I'm enjoying it for now I know it's not gonna last long because come August we're gonna have our hands full again And that's not to say that we don't have our hands full now, but it's just it's got to the point where it's more manageable like she's only on One nap a day which she has been for a little while now, but that just makes it so much easier like even just to time things before I felt like I was kind of a slave to her routine and that was my choice like I wanted it that way because it made sense for us as a family but it also meant that I had to like get up at certain times do things at certain times and like that can be very <sighs> exhausting sometimes but at the same time I liked it because it made me feel more in control so it's like you know it's just one of those things that you know there's pros and cons to it obviously but there's more pros than cons it's just it's just hard in the first year, in that first year to do things and to um, even like logistically like leaving the house has just got so much simpler since she's turned one. And that just is because she's older, she's more, a little bit more independent. So you don't have to plan ahead as much with like different foods that you're taking, baby spoons, all that stuff. I actually have not carried a changing bag. I kind of stopped carrying changing bags pretty early on. She's opening up my filing cabinet now. Um, but just because I find them annoying and I would rather just take a big handbag instead and just fit everything in there. Like, obviously I take nappies with me everywhere we go. I don't take a change of clothes. I know that's probably risky, but I don't. I just couldn't be bothered. I don't really, unless we're do doing like a long distance thing, then obviously I will. I can see you. I can see you. It's just so much simpler then. It's like logistically so much easier to do things, to leave the house. And I love that kind of stage, but then we're just gonna be thrown back into it all over again, which is fine. It's fine. It's like bittersweet, you know, because I, I do love the baby stage, but at the same time, I kind of like when they start to get out of it and the toddler stage as well. So, um, it's more fun definitely it's like the more fun phase it's more fun for dads as well i feel like jonathan has, is getting to know alessia a lot better probably the number one like big change that happened this month is that i stopped breastfeeding and if you want to see my whole kind of like mental breakdown about that and like how i actually felt about it at the time you can watch my 22 week emotional pregnancy vlog because that's where i kind of like i had just stopped it so i was still it was still very raw and fresh and i was very emotional about it. I'm past that now, thank goodness, because I I hate that. I hate feeling that way and I hate feeling that like even vulnerable. I don't know, I just don't like it. Um, I kind of like to like, you know, snap out of things and just get my stuff together. Like, I, that sounds bad, but like, I just don't like dwelling on things, but I'm also a very emotional person. So when I'm in the moment, I'll feel it and I will like let it out like I, I don't bottle things up but at the same time I like to just deal with things and then move on <laughs> you know I think that's probably how I would explain it the best so we stopped breastfeeding I will say the last time that I fed her and I knew it was going to be the last time was extremely hard like I can even feel myself getting emotional now but I'm not going to cry in this video um I just I sat there fed her and bawled and I mean, I don't really want to get into it because I don't want this video to be the same as the last video. But you can watch that if you want to know like more about how I felt about it. I find it very, very hard to give up breastfeeding, but at the same time, I knew it was the right thing to do. I knew it was the right time. So since then, she has been drinking cow's milk twice a day and she loves it. 
she's been drinking it from a cup she never really took a bottle she never really liked bottles anyway even when i tried them on her in the beginning i don't know if you guys will remember but she was fine for a little bit and then she just rejected it completely and then i just couldn't do it anymore um so she just was breastfed basically until 12 months but i'm really happy that i did it you know like i loved the whole experience and i would do it all over again if i could I'm obviously gonna do it all over again with the next one, but every child is different. Like every breastfeeding experience is different. <laughs> what are you doing on the floor? <laughs> and my breastfeeding experience with Alessia will always be special. Even though it is over, I will always have that to look back on and will always have that bond. And I'm deciding not to be sad about it because there's no point. Is there? There's no point. There's no point. She drinks cow's milk in the morning in a little beaker and then she drinks water the rest of the day, and then she drinks cow's milk again at night. Um, not at night, but like with her dinner, and that's it. She doesn't breastfeed to sleep anymore. It, we've replaced that with a book. So we read Goodnight Moon, don't we? She is very active. She's racing around the place, like crawling wise. She's not walking yet. Um, come on, come to mommy. But she loves to crawl. She loves to be on the floor. She loves to be around the dogs. She loves to get in their beds, cuddle them, go up to their faces. Like she's obsessed with the dogs. She loves Emilia and Eduardo, obviously. I feel like she has a different relationship with them both though. I think she looks up to Emilia. Like she watches her and she kind of like, probably will always look up to her. I feel like as an older sister, like that's just a normal thing. But with Eduardo, it's like a more fun relationship. Like she will do, th she'll fight with him more. Like they don't fight yet, but she will get upset if he takes a toy off her. Whereas with Amelia, she just feels like she's one of the grown ups almost. Um, but with Eduardo, if he grabs the toy off her, she like makes a face and like looks at me and starts fake crying. She'll also hit him for fun and then he'll, he like plays along with it and screams or shouts and then she does it again and laughs and it's like a whole game where she doesn't do that with Amelia but I think she just knows that he's like the funny one and Amelia's the more like, she's not serious but she's just the more like, she admires her more so and looks up to her but then Eduardo's just like crazy and they just do crazy things together. It's so cute to see like their different relationships and I feel like the kids are like that with me and Jonathan as well like they come to me for like comfort and like if they're feeling upset or they're feeling sad or even if they if they hurt themselves or anything like that um they'll always come to me and then with Jonathan they go to him like for fun you know like for games for playing for crazy stuff but with me it's just like a different relationship okay so this is one of her new things that she's been obsessed with is putting things onto other things or into. So she'll put caps back on bottles. She will put, oh, you want some? <laughs> you want some? It's gonna get all over both of us. Oh, is that yummy? Is that nice? It is just before lunchtime, so she probably is actually hungry and thirsty. You wanna put it on? Alessia, do it. Oh, more? Good girl. She now loves drinking out of a beaker. I think I said that already, but she, and she has mastered drinking from a straw. Yeah. Which is really cool, because it means when we go out, um, there's a trick to making babies drink with a straw, by the way. I don't know if you guys know it. I don't know, it's probably like common knowledge. Judy from um, Benji and Judy, or it's Judy's life. It's Judy time, it's Judy's life. <laughs> That's what it's called, isn't it? It's Judy's life. Yeah, it's Judy's life. She taught me how to do it many years ago. Not many, but like four years ago. Yes. Five years ago. Five. Five years ago with Juliana. And when Juliana and Amelia were like eight months, she taught me how to do it. And basically all you do is the mum or the dad or whoever has to suck up some of the liquid, like whatever it is, juice, water, whatever, milk, um, from the 
like top of the straw so that it fills the straw and then put place the bottom of the straw in the baby's mouth so that it's already gonna like fall into them like they don't have to do much sucking but they get they get the concept of if they suck more more comes out um, without it being too difficult and once they grasp that like the end of the straw so you basically like feed them with the end of the straw for as long as it takes for them to get used to it so you just keep sucking it up you suck from the top and then give them the bottom and because it's like slanted this way it falls naturally into their mouth anyway but they grasp the concept so much easier and then as if by magic it's like amazing how this how quickly this happens you give them the straw normally and they just naturally know to suck it is insane like it's such a cool tip and it's probably obvious to a lot of people out there but to me it wasn't and Judy taught it to me and I thought it was amazing and um, but I've done it with each of my kids since and we did that with Alessia in Jamaica or like on the cruise and it just made giving her drinks so much easier even if you like forget her cup or anything so um one of the other things that she has been doing is pulling herself up now she is not she's not walking yet she's not She'll stand assisted, but she doesn't love standing. She used to like standing when she was like a tiny baby, which is really random. But now she just loves sitting and like crawling. Cause I think that's how she can get, she knows she can get around fastest. But I caught her standing at the stairs a few times, which freaked me out. We since bought like four stair gates, even though we had one already. Um, But she will try and stand at the stairs. She, She's not doing it that much. She's done it like twice. So I'm not completely scared yet of her like climbing over things and like, but it's, we're getting there. Like that's kind of the stage that we're at right now. She will definitely pull herself up to like kneeling position or sitting position and things like that. But she, she's kind of <laughs> almost at, is that funny? She's almost at the stage where she wants to stand. Um, I just think what motivates her the most is that she like what she can see at that level. So like if I'm sitting on the couch and she's opposite me at the coffee table and she pulls up and she can see me like above the coffee table, she gets really excited and that kind of motivates her to like go further. But <laughs> She's definitely not, she's not coasting yet, she's not walking yet, um, which I'm not really surprised at because she crawled like two months later than Emilia and Eduardo did. So I kind of feel like she'll probably catch up that way, you know? Um, at the same time, I don't really compare them. Like, obviously you can't help but remember back stuff, but a lot of stuff I've forgotten. And I just see them all as different. Like they're all different babies. They all look different. They all develop differently. Um, I just try not to compare, because I've seen some comments. <laughs> it's gonna get dirty, let's see. It's, I've seen some comments like full on comparing them to each other and like Amelia did this at this time and Eduardo did this and, and then I just not doing this and I'm like, things that I didn't even know, like things that I had forgotten, they're like comparing my blog posts or my videos. And I just think it's ridiculous. Like you can't compare children. There's children in Emilia and Eduardo's classes that are at different levels for different things like reading, maths, writing, um, talking even. Like it's just, they all eventually get to the same place. But if you spend your time comparing kids or babies, you're just wasting your time. Like you're wasting a chunk of your life that you should be enjoying. Like you should be enjoying it, just enjoying your baby. The camera cut off, I don't even know where it cut off, but I was talking about not comparing your babies to anybody else's. Um, like I was saying, there's kids Alessia's age that look different, that act different. Um, and same with Amelia and same with Eduardo. I remember when I lived in Ireland and had Amelia and she was this age, well a bit older than this age. And I had friends who had two kids, two babies who were the same in the same like school year. So they were younger than Amelia, but they were in the, they are now in the same school year. And the three babies, you guys probably remember if you watched the vlogs back then, but the three babies could not be more different from each other. Like each child was so different from the, the other one. And it wasn't like two were the same and one was different. They were all different. And now I look at them and they're all five 
same age as Amelia. They're all in the same year at school. They're not in the same school because we obviously moved, but they all look pretty similar now. You know, they all just look like five-year-olds. Like it's, it's mad. So I just don't get bogged down with it. Like I just don't understand people that do. And like they're my kids. So I don't know why people are getting upset about or obsessed with someone else's children not being the same as each other you know <laughs> like they're my kids so if I don't care you shouldn't care um but yeah it's just ridiculous it's, I think it's just the internet though I honestly do I think the internet just like magnifies everything she's just throwing stuff all over my room at this point um <laughs> she's saying words now I don't know if I think they're intentional, like I definitely do. So yesterday she pointed to a picture of Amelia on the fridge and clear as day said, Amelia. She said Melia or Mia or whatever it sounded like. It, it was definitely her trying to say Amelia because she pointed at her and went, Melia, Melia. Did you say yeah. Amelia? Yeah. She'll try and like say names, say, consonant sounds that are in people's names like to make it sound like she's saying that name it's just really really yeah. interesting uh, who's that is that alessia sizes wise she kind of varies she's some of her 9 to 12 months are like too small like this that she's wearing right now i think is 9 to 12 and it's getting really tight um and then other things you could buy around like 12 month clothing and they're absolutely don't eat them they're keys generally she fits into like size 12 months yeah 12 to 18 can work but some 12 to 18 having said that are massive on her so it definitely depends on the brand um her nappy size is still a four you want it okay okay do you want to say goodbye look at you you're covered in eyeliner or like i don't even know what she was touching my um their keys don't eat them she was touching my sharpeners for like my um makeup pencils and now her fingers are black. Okay, it is lunchtime now, so we are gonna go. Why did I wear a white top or a cream top? Answer me that. Why do I bother? Why do I bother trying to look nice when I have three and a half kids? <laughs> no. 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 Alessia, can you say bye bye? Say bye bye. I'm probably gonna do her next update when she's 18 months. So don't expect an update for a while. Um, that's just always how I've done it. And I think that's probably how I'm gonna do it from with Alessia as well. But thank you so much for watching all of these videos. If you have like her monthly updates, I know they haven't been every single month, but I have tried. She's number three, so it's hard. Um, and I hope to continue to do them after this pregnancy as well with the new baby, your little brother, who's coming in three months, two, no, three months. We're in April, May, June, July, August, four months. <laughs> I can't do maths at all. Do you want to do it with mommy? No. Hi. 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 She's like, yeah, that's just normal from like when we were in on holiday. <laughs> She's like, this is how you looked normally. Oh, look at you. You're not taking them off or anything. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a good girl. Thank you so much for watching this video and this whole series if you did. Um, I have put them all in a playlist for easy access if you want to see all the monthly updates. <laughs> and we will talk to you in our next one. Say bye. Alessia. No, I love you. Do you love mommy? Yeah? Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Mm. 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 <laughs> Aww. Mm. Bye. Say bye. Say bye. You pretty girl. Oh, your hair. Is that your hair? Is that your head? Wanna brush your hair? I'm gonna eat you.